no redo. That's odd, isn't it? No logging. This is the question that came in. I'm trying to do no logging operations. And yes, I am using direct mode, but I'm still creating redo. Why is this? Just in terms of a quick background, most of us are aware that you can always been for a long time being able to set a table as logging or no logging, the default being logging, obviously. Um, and in times gone by, we used to call it recoverable and unrecoverable, which generally raised some alarm bells, but logging and no logging. And it's relatively well known that you only get the benefits of that no logging if you're doing direct mode operations, things like parallel DML, insert append mode, direct load insert in SQL loader, those kind of operations. The thing that made this question a little bit more interesting than sort of the, the classic historical question of why isn't no logging ending up with no logging is that this person was saying, I am using direct mode and yet I'm still getting the logging created. Let's have a little look at that. And we'll do it obviously with a demo because that's the best way to explain anything. I'm gonna start with a table called T1 and I'm gonna create it, no logging. I'll put it there in uppercase, nice and explicit so we can see it. It's got 10 rows just from DBA objects, just a, a small table that we've seeded with some data. And here is the claim about append mode possibly creating lot redo logs, even though it's a direct mode insert, and even though this table we just saw is created as no logging. I'm doing insert append into T1, select object name, etc., from DBA objects, and I'm just inserting 10 rows from object ID between 10 and 20. In fact, I inserted nine rows, just a small little insert append to keep it nice and efficient. And here's the interesting thing. We actually did create some redo. The table is no logging. We're doing insert append, but we did create some redo. It's a small amount of redo and something that probably we wouldn't really worry about. But let's now look at a comparison to a table that is defined as logging for the exact same sequence of operations. So I'll create table T2 exactly in the same way as I created the table T1. It's seeded with initial set of data for just a few set of rows from DBA objects. I'll turn on auto trace. I'll do the exact same insert, just plonking in nine rows, this time without the append hint. So this table is logging and it has not the append hint, so it's a conventional insert. So if anything, there should be at least more redo and this one has, well, a bit of a very big surprise, absolutely zero redo. That in itself we return to, but let's talk about the contradiction first, in the sense that I'm doing a direct mode insert and I'm getting redo. I'm doing a conventional insert and I'm not getting redo. The key to this thing is that remember what insert append was originally designed to do. If you have large scale operations for which you are prepared to accept some of the compromises, namely you're going to lock the entire object, then insert append mode is a great way of getting data in en masse. It's really designed for large scale operations. So I'm gonna repeat this demo now in a much more larger fashion. So I'm gonna drop T1, T2. I'm gonna recreate them exactly as before. T1 is no logging, T2 is logging, but now the table's been initially reseeded just as the previous demo. Rather than just insert a smattering of rows, let's use insert append for what it was actually designed to do. I'm gonna insert all the rows from DBA objects. It's still not what you would call large scale, it's only 70,000 rows, but it's big enough. Now look at the stats. Yes, we've generated a little bit more redo, about 38 kilobytes. I think we can be pretty confident that if I'm inserting 77,000 rows, well, a row can't be half a byte, obviously. We are definitely creating far more than 34 megabytes worth of data into the table. So this gives us that confidence that no logging and append has actually achieved some benefit here. We're not actually creating redo for every single row that we're inserting. So what is that redo? The data we're inserting does not have to be logged. That's the benefit of no logging and insert append. However, the metadata that surrounds that table does need to be logged. I'm creating extents, that table is growing. I'm putting information into the data dictionary about this table, what the extents are, etc. Those operations do need to be logged because you do need to be able to recover them in the event of a instance failure. So that information does create redo. It's the recursive SQLs. You can see at the top, we did 128 recursive calls in there. It's some of those operations, which will be actual DML on the data dictionary 
that needs to be logged. Hence, there's always a little bit of redo log that's going to be created even with a no logging insert append. Let's now compare that 70,000 row insert with the conventional insert on table T2, which was created as logging. So now insert into T2, select all the rows from DBA objects, and we see that the actual true benefit of insert append, I'd gone from 34 kilobytes of redo up to 4.5 megabytes. And now we can actually see the true benefit of insert append. We're actually getting a little bit of redo compared to a much larger amount of redo. I'd like you to try to remember that, that four megabytes of difference between an insert append and a conventional insert for all the rows from DBA objects. Keep that four and a half megabytes in mind. That's a representation of the difference in redo to insert the table data. I'm now gonna take this benchmark and amp it up a little bit. I'm gonna truncate my tables. I'm gonna redo the same insert in a second, but first I'm gonna add some indexes. Indexes are different from just doing blocks in a table because indexes must be created in the right order. The data is stored sequenced in a sense. So I've created indexes on these tables. The tables are empty. Let's now redo those two inserts, one with insert append and one without insert append. So this is the first point I wanna make. Insert append is great for no logging for table data. It does have thumb benefits for index loading as well, which we'll see in a second, but the index data must be logged. And you can see here that I've actually created 20 megabytes of redo, even though this table is no logging and I'm using insert append. Because the indexes have to be maintained, I actually will consume some redo, even though it's insert append. Now you might be thinking, well, I've lost all the benefit of insert append. I used up 20 megabytes there. Let's do the conventional insert on the table now, which is defined as logging with the inserts in place. And that's 34 megabytes of redo size you can see there. Now here's the important thing. I went from 20 megabytes to 35. It's an extra 15 megabytes. This helps show us that even with indexes on, insert append is actually a better version of insert for large scale operations, if you can afford the locking, even when there's inserts on. Remember back in our first demo, the difference between loading the table with, it, with append and no append was about four megabytes. Here with the inserts, the difference is 35 megabytes to 20. It's a 15 megabyte differential. It's not just the four megabytes of the table, it's an extra 11 benefit as well. So even if you have indexes on, you will still get some performance benefits using insert append over conventional insert. But as you can see, the ideal, if your redo log system is a critical component, and you want to minimize that, the ideal situations for insert append is make the indexes unusable or drop them, do your huge data loads, and then recreate the indexes. And if necessary, you can create the indexes in no logging as well. So hopefully that explains why we do get redo, just a small amount with insert append, possibly a large amount if we have indexes on the table. And also you're still going to get benefits over conventional mode insert. There's one thing I haven't explained yet. And let's, let's go back to the very first demo. I've got my table here, T2, it's a logging table. I did some inserts, I inserted nine rows into the table and I did a commit, no redo. That's odd, isn't it? You think that everything must contain redo. I've done, I've done a change, even if it's just nine rows, even if I wanted to roll it back, I must do some redo of some sort. How can I have no redo size? It's actually a, you could call it a bug or an oversight in showing the age of SQL plus. The redo size stat in SQL Plus is showing the redo bytes written to the redo logs. Way back in Oracle 10, we actually made some improvements to the redo log subsystem in the Oracle database. For small changes, and I won't define what small is, but basically for small little changes, we can do an optimization, what we call private redo. And what private redo says is, well, I'm doing an insert in this session. I'll put this small amount of redo just into a private buffer, not the log buffer, which, which is basically what's going to get written out to the read logs, just a private buffer for my session. Because this insert, no one needs to see yet. It's an insert, there's no concept of how I mean, someone needs to roll that information back yet. So until I commit it, I don't need to actually do any flushing out to the redo logs. Because I put the redo size out statistic there before I committed, there's actually just the information in my private redo buffer, not the standard log buffer. Now, how do I know that's going on? It's not really made available to us in depth, but if you look at some of your session statistics that start with the word IMU, 
that's actually not related to undo, it's actually related to in-memory undo, which is a pairing component. In-memory undo and private redo are two sort of uh, memory components that go hand in hand. Um, we can see there on the screen that I had some a little bit of undo allocated and I had an IMU commit, that was my one commit. I took information from my private redo area and then flush that out to the redo logs, which is not picked up in my redo size statistic in SQL plus. So hopefully that answers two questions for you, that append can create a tiny bit of redo, but it's still gonna be a lot less than a conventional mode insert. Um, indexes have a part to play, but as I said, remember the intent of append, large scale data operations, and the fact that redo has evolved. The classic thing of I make a change, it goes in the log buffer and that gets flushed to redo, is still true by and large, but the Oracle database gets smarter and smarter with each version, and we actually have these things called private redos. Uh, if you Google for private redo strands, or IMU and in-memory undo, there's various blog posts and white papers out there about that, but obviously it's really an internal optimization that we don't do a lot of documentation on.